Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Lawrence. Uh, I'm the CEO and uh, one of the founders of Scorpio Space. Uh, I'm going to talk uh, quite briefly um, on, uh, on the uh, perspective of a user terminal developer. Uh, I'm going to, it's probably uh, a nice uh, addition um, to the first uh, presentation that we have, but from a different uh, angle. Uh, so, uh, well, the way we look at the market is pretty much as everybody uh, <clears throat> illustrated before. We're looking at the revolution in terms of the capacity and the massive uh, launches of, of satellites into, into space. The way I look at it is that uh, a large portion of the infrastructure, of the communication infrastructure, is going from the ground to space. And this is what we're witnessing uh, these days. Um, and it's going to grow more and more as the uh, cost of launch is, is uh, going dramatically down. Uh, people are claiming that it will go down as, as far as maybe hundreds of dollars a kilo by uh, 2030. And that creates a whole different uh, market, as May uh, pointed out. Uh, but what I'm claiming is that as it is going along, there is a missing link in order to uh, realize the potential of all that capacity in space. Because there is not much use if, you, if there's tons of capacity, but you can't use it because the user terminal is either too expensive or too big or is, is not uh, adequate for mass deployment. And right now, this is the weak link uh, in the chain because if you compare the, the, the massive uh, investments in the infrastructure, in the satellites of Starlink and Amazon and all of these guys, to the amount uh, invested in the user terminal, you see a huge difference. And if you look in the past at deploying new communication networks, such as the cellular ones, uh, it did not take off until we had a really low cost, high performance user terminal in our hands, the iPhone. Okay, so until Motorola and, and Nokia came out with, with, the, with the cheap devices, we couldn't use the, the network. So the same thing I think we're looking at here. Um, and a little bit of a, of a bird's eye view on, on how this market is evolving or has evolved until now. So we've been looking at mostly uh, fixed parabolic reflectors working with geosatellites. Um, and uh, now that we are looking at, uh, we're moving forward to uh, mobile systems, and in some cases, we needed to have uh, flat panels, but this is as far as we went until the uh, new space era has come uh, to our doorstep. In the Leo, in the Leo market or environment, uh, there are completely different uh, set of requirements. So what really is required from a, a user terminal? And why are we talking about a flat panel or ESA or phase array? Why can't we use the same dish we used to? So let's look at what is required from, from a terminal in the environment of new space where you have MIOs, LEOs, and GEOs. Uh, first of all, we need to have a very fast switch between satellites. Okay? The number, this is roughly the numbers that are, are, have been talked as, as a consensus today, that you need to have your system switch between the satellites in order to be sort of make before break, if you will, in the LEO environment. <clears throat> a multi-beam is required, because if you want to work with two satellites at a time, or if you want to work with two different orbits, you need more than one beam, minimum two RX beam and one TX. Um, on the other hand, we can use a little bit of smaller terminals, because the link budget is much better in the LEO environment than in, in the GEO in most, in most cases. So a G over T of around six, where larger numbers are used to be uh, in, in, the, in the case of, of a geo satellite. Um, and we can have, uh, and the, the scanning angle, you don't need to, to scan all the way down to the horizon like you used to uh, with a geo satellite, especially on the, on the uh, high latitude routes. Um, so these are the set of, uh, of uh, requirements that are required from an antenna going forward to this new, uh, new era.
so in the, in the eyes or in the perspective of someone trying to develop the, the user terminal, what are the challenges that I'm facing? First of all, uh, when I'm looking at an electronically steered antenna, which is, as, as I described, this is the minimum requirement right now, typically we're looking at two antennas, one transmit, one receive, with thousands of elements. Each element is sort of a small antenna with all the uh, RF chain attached to it, uh, RF components, and this, f first of all, is uh, deriving a very high cost. Very high cost. If you're looking at um, twenty dollars, fifty dollars, uh, an element uh, multiplied by uh, thousands, you, you just your bomb is is uh, through the roof uh, even before you started building the, the antenna itself. Typically, it's a uh, it's not a full duplex antenna, so you need transmit and receive. Uh, the power consumption to these antennas is huge. We're talking hundreds even more uh, kilowatts per antenna. And the overall size and complexity is, is uh, problematic. So phase arrays antennas have been in the market for many, many years, tens of years, especially in the military arena, starting from uh, fire control systems and others, and, and SATCOM also. But it's always been for special purposes, high-end customers um, that, uh, that were willing to, to pay. Uh, looking at the mass market that we can potentially uh, serve here, we need to, to go down to a much, much lower uh, cost and uh, power consumption and size. So in the, in the user terminal, um, we're looking at uh, a few players that have started play in this. So the holy grail in, in our market for the last, I would say, five years, and going forward it will be in, intensified also, is sort of the cheap phase array. Okay, that's the holy grail. Everyone is running towards that. Probably, uh, as I speak, uh, 50 companies around the world are developing a low-cost phase array. Um, several of these are been doing some, some headways, um, and I'll go through very briefly. Um, some of them are less significant that I won't uh, touch upon because I don't have the time. So looking at the key players, Starlink, of course, they're, they're developing in-house their own solution. Everybody knows the nice uh, flat uh, antenna they have. Um, uh, again, not a full blue duplex. Ball Aerospace have uh, been developing for, for many years now. Uh, military originally antenna, uh, quite a high cost. Performance, not so much but um, a very valid solution, very robust, very mature. Uh, Hughes, again, as, 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 uh, as mentioned before, are part of the ground, uh, the ground infrastructure, so naturally for them to develop the solution for OneWeb. Uh, GetSat here in Israel, also developing uh, a very nice phase array. Again, one transmit, one receive, quite high cost, but going after the low-hanging fruit of government uh, projects, uh, quite a nice solution. Uh, Allspace, uh, they have introduced the, the lens uh, technology, a little bit more exotic uh, technology, and Kaimeta, everybody knows them, and of course uh, Gilat have been in the market for many years, also very advanced uh, phase array antenna for high-end customers. Uh, a brief uh, explanation about the, the landscape of the, of the different players. Um, as you go to the right, it's more, uh, more mature. As it's, it's bigger, means they have more uh, business merit in the market, um, more established in the market. Um, so uh, looking at the key player, you can see that uh, uh, Ball is, 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 is proven and has already uh, have, uh, have good deals um, in the market, and some are very advanced but, uh, and very well funded, but not so much with uh, the right, uh, with the right uh, partners at this point in time. Uh, some of the issues and, you know, very roughly, uh, what are the things, the uh, challenges that we are facing and the companies are facing? So pretty much in line with, um, with the first uh, presentation, 
you can see that there's a sort of uh, traditional phased array, if you will, uh, quite high power and high bomb uh, from the get-go with a single beam, if it's an uh, analog chip-based uh, phased array. Uh, a digital phased array, basically, um, uh, Satisfy antenna is the only one in the market. Uh, they develop their own uh, digital chip, uh, quite high, uh, high power and high cost. Uh, Metamaterial um, uh, from Kaimeta, uh, with a, again, with a single beam, but good power, co good power consumption and potentially uh, low cost. Some issues here with the uh, environmental, okay, because it's a metamaterial, not so much adequate for uh, aviation or, or um, very low temperatures uh, because of the properties of, of the material itself and the lens antenna uh, with quite a high bomb and not a, uh, a lot of people think that it's a full duplex. It's not a full duplex. It's a either transmit or receive from a single element. So again, issue with the size and the cost. Um, a brief word about what we are trying to do. We are trying basically to solve some of the, of the basic issues uh, of this market and uh, address the big challenges of the cost and the size and the power consumption. So we developed a, a very uh, low cost, uh, very thin uh, digital phased array antenna that can do transmit and receive from the same aperture with a digital beamformer uh, in uh, development with uh, AVI um, that will enable us to have a multi-beam, multi-orbit antenna, but because we are uh, manipulating the, the beam uh, digitally, we're able also to do a very uh, uh, lower the cost of the number of RF elements. So we've eliminated the number of elements um, to about uh, um, one square root of the number of elements us usually used uh, in a typical phased array. Uh, and therefore, really uh, cutting the cost and the power consumption of the antenna uh, quite dramatically. So in our first generation of, uh, of antennas, we're, uh, we're doing the uh, scanning in elevation electronically and in azimuth mechanically. Um, and in the next generation, a full uh, phased array. Um, we've actually produced our, our first uh, antenna. Uh, this is our first antenna. It's an 8 by 8 element, full duplex, transmit and receive, um, very high performance. Uh, this antenna uh, is uh, almost 0 dB G over T, so uh, about 90% uh, uh, efficiency of the aperture itself. It's 4 uh, millimeter thick, and uh, as I said, it covers the KU band, 10.7 to 14.5. Um, and now we're uh, in the development of the RF uh, portion of it, and then the uh, digital uh, beamformer, uh, probably a full performing uh, system by, uh, by August-September time frame. And as I mentioned uh, before, we're looking at the IoT market, government market, and aviation as a first uh, target customers. Um, hopefully to bring them a solution that makes more sense in terms of the cost and the power consumption. And uh, that's it for me for today. Thank you. <laughs>